this entitled mum does not think anyone has the right to privacy. But when she decides to barge through the door of this poor person trying to get changed, fortunately some instant revenge is ready to strike this entitled parent. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. The Backstory I've recently, as in 8 months ago, been diagnosed with agoraphobia. So basically, I constantly try to avoid anything that could lead to panic or embarrassment. So whenever I go out, I try to stay close to someone I trust. Or if I can't, I try to stay close to any and all exit doors or windows. This is from my personal experience, and this does not apply to everyone with the condition. Please understand that. And I think it's extremely important to note that I am an SM, selective mute, in some situations, but in others, I can just barely speak. The characters. Karen equals entitled mumster, NK nice kid, me is me, AM is amazing friend. One day a few months ago, I was at a store with my best friend, and probably the only man I trust. Us both being artists, we were looking for an array of paints and supplies, and he told me that he needed to go to the restroom, and to stay there because it was not only close to an exit, but it was also close to the bathroom. I said okay, and he left to do his business. But while I was scanning the shelves for a certain product, I heard the doorbell chime, and in comes our favourite person, Karen, who was followed by a younger girl with natural bright red hair and blue eyes. Karen said something quickly to her kid, and then they both parted ways. NK began to walk in the direction of my aisle, and I started to panic a little. When she finally reached it, she walked next to me and started to look for something. After about 40 seconds of looking, she turned to me and politely asked if I knew where a certain paint was. Me, being a regular of the store, knew exactly where it was, but in that situation, I could barely speak, let alone look at her. She realized my state and said, oh, take your time, and gave me a little smile. After about 40 seconds of stuttering and slurring, I finally managed to tell her that it was in the next aisle over. She thanked me and went along with her business. At that time, my friend had just gotten back from the bathroom and saw me talking to NK and asked me about it and asked if I was alright. After explaining everything, he calmed down, and so had I. We went on with our shopping and we had ended up walking next to Karen, and she apparently saw this as the perfect time to ask me about talking to her daughter. And the conversation went like this. Excuse me? Yes ma'am? Karen in a somewhat rude tone. Not you! She points to me. Her! Me visibly confused. Oh, y yes ma'am? Mind telling me why you were speaking to my daughter? Me already scared for my life. Oh, I was telling her where something was. Heck no! She cuts me off by raising her hand in front of my face. You were not telling her anything. You were flirting with her. Now at this point, I realized what she was saying. While I was talking to her daughter, my face had gone red and it seemed like I was doing more than just giving direction. Oh, oh no, ma'am, I swear, it was harmless. I don't want some f talking to my daughter. Now she had raised her voice quite a bit. I would have started crying right then and there if my friend hadn't grabbed my arm and took over for me. Okay, she wasn't flirting with your darn daughter. She was helping her. And don't raise your voice. We're talking like normal people, not arguing. Yes, she was. If she wasn't, then why was her face so red? And why did it take her so long, huh? She goes red when she's nervous. And she's got a stutter. I don't believe that bullcrap for one second. She was... And here comes her daughter, obviously confused. Hey mom, what's happening? I was telling this to stop flirting with you. That's what. Karen crossed her arms and NK sighed. Mom, she was helping me. Once again, Karen butts in. No, no, no. I don't believe that lie for a second. I'm not gonna let this lesbian ruin my daughter. And that's final. Karen now looks at me and steps closer. And as for you, she pokes my chest and I nearly faint. Stay the frick away from my... All of a sudden, my friend pulls me back completely and goes off at Karen. Do not touch her first off. And secondly, she doesn't want your darn daughter. After that, they both start yelling and I begin to have a panic attack in the corner. After some time, security is called and they ask what's going on. Karen says, This man tried to arm me like all Karens do, and after about a minute of trying to tell the officer about the R threats my friend supposedly made, she then turns to me and says, 
and that thing touched my daughter. Arrest her. The daughter cuts in, but I can't hear a word. After that, I remember Karen giving me threats while she's being forced out in handcuffs. And the daughter apologizes. My friend tries to calm me to barely succeed. And the officer asked if we wanted to press charges. I tell him no, but my friend insists on it. We end up suing her for trauma or whatever. Imagine being diagnosed with agoraphobia and then something like this happens to you. Surely that would only add to your anxiety of being in situations out in public. It would just justify it in your mind. You're like, yeah, this is why I don't go out and talk to people. Because, you know, they're people. My crazy entitled aunt, whom you all know so well by now, has an annoying habit, one of her many annoying habits, to just storm in when I was changing my clothes. The door would be closed and if it wasn't locked, she would just let herself in. My protest that I may be in a state of undress fell on deaf ears, as did any instance that she knocked before entrance, like a civilized human being. The following incidents happened when I was either 18 or 19. Aunt and her husband were over for a visit. I was in my room, changing my clothes. My bedroom door had a small defect. It wouldn't lock properly, so anytime it was closed, my dad, stepmom, and stepbrother would either knock or ask if they could come in. Not entitled aunt, of course. She considered herself above such frivolous courtesies. She could come into rooms as she saw fit, and us mere mortals would just have to live with it. Unfortunately for her, this mere mortal had had enough of her privacy being invaded. My top was off when I heard the door begin to creep open. I yelled, I'm changing, wait outside. As expected, aunt didn't listen and was about to stick her head in when I swiftly reached the door, pulled it back a little and slammed it hard into aunt's thick skull. Not enough to crack her skull, but enough to hurt. Aunt let out a howl that instantly brought a smile to my face. She went downstairs whining. I followed. She yelled at my dad about what I had done. My dad and uncle, aunt's husband, were drinking at the time and were uncharacteristically chilled. Dad just looked at her and then looked at me and said something like, Yeah, don't do that. My uncle just bursts out laughing, as if his wife getting her head banged was the funniest thing he had ever heard. Such dismissal of her grievances was too much to bear for my aunt. She demanded that they leave immediately. Uncle told her he was in no condition to drive. Besides, he and my dad were going to watch a cricket match, so leaving was out of the question. Aunt dialed my cousin's number, believing wholeheartedly that her son would come to her aid. But judging from her end of the conversation, cousin was out with friends and wasn't going to drive all the way over to deal with her stupid butt. And why couldn't she just stop getting into unnecessary squabbles? Aunt had no options left. She just sat down on the couch while holding against her head the ice pack my stepmom had brought for her. Her anger was boiling over, but was completely ignored by my happy dad and uncle. It was a lovely evening. I don't understand how some people have no respect for other people's privacy. I'm 100% sure that that aunt wouldn't let anybody barge into her room if she was changing. So why on earth would she think she's entitled to do the same? So people really wanted to know the other story about my other aunt. So backstory for those who haven't read the last one. I lived in my grandparents' house for 10 years. Both grandparents are dead and there's no will. So not sure what to do with the house. But grandma's wish before dying was not to sell the house. About my aunt. She is married to her husband who has his business abroad and has one boy of my age. He's a really sweet kid and I love him to death. But she sent him to a boarding school for character development. She is an alcoholic hates my father and has no morale. So now over to the actual story. Now, when we were in the house, we had everything bad happen to us. We lost money. My dad got his leg crushed under a bus. He also got cancer. I got depression and anxiety. My dad lost his job and, you know, etc, etc. So basically, a bad omen. We moved about a year ago, and I kid you not, our life instantly became perfect. Like, amazing. See, the only reason we had to make trips back and forth in that house was because our old house was 220 square yards and our current house is 110 square yard. So we couldn't fit all of our furniture in it. The house is just abandoned and dusty and stuff. So my grandma died a few weeks ago, and after her death, my aunt, who is very hungry for money, 
has been trying to get my other psycho aunt convinced to sell the house. But they won't have a home after that, so she denies. Now that woman at least wants to sell our floor. The house has a great value, so she really wants to get the money from it. Her husband returned from Thailand, where he lives, to attend the Chortha, something done to pay final respects on the fourth day after the death. Now, we didn't go home, so we have no idea what the frick went on there, but my psycho aunt, who was kind of concerned, told us that the aunt came with her husband and he put locks on our house, hence stopping us from doing anything in it. We had to get new stuff for our new home that we're gonna move in in May, and we wanted to keep those things in that house because we have no space where we're living. Now, my aunt told my mum about this when we went there to accept the delivery, but mum and dad went to a locked house. She was restricting us from getting our personal property. There are books, tables, cabinets, almirahs, and whatnot in the house. We can't get any of it now, just cause that B thinks she is entitled to that house and our stuff. <laughs> Don't make a communism joke. My mom's relatives, except my grandma and grandpa, hate my dad for some reason. They accused him of killing my grandpa. When it was my aunt who was responsible for it, it's a long story. Now let me tell you what, my dad is the sweetest human being I know. He is there to protect us. He handles whatever insults my mom's relatives throw at him. He works really hard for us. He gives us every luxury, even in dire times and whatnot. I don't know why they hate him. He's such a nice man. I literally had to protect him at my grandma's funeral so that no one would say anything to him. And I was ready to fight if anyone did. Anyway, my dad didn't get angry or anything but simply said, when we'll be able to move out, we'll take everything and never come back again. Everyone agreed. Now we had totally let this go cause we know how crazy a person that woman and her husband is. But about a week ago, my mum received a call. My friend usually called at that time so I thought it would be her. But it was the aunt. She was drunk and was saying some senseless crap. Here's how the convo went. I have filed a police report against you and you'll get arrested if you try to break the locks. That doesn't make any sense. We have just as much right as you do over that house. You and your husband will not come near that house and stop telling Aunt Two crazy stories about not selling the aunt. Realizing that she thinks I'm my mom, we're not saying anything to her. You're insane. And your husband, I will make him pay and he will suffer. At this point, I have had enough and just want to make her shut up. I have no respect for her now and I just went off. I've never ever said anything bad to her before, but yeah. Okay, now I can't take it. If you ever call here again, you will face consequences. You are no longer welcome to call here and I'll straight up block you. So here's the thing. My sister is kind of the person who has had to shut this woman up a lot of times. So she thought I was her. Sister is 23. You mother effer! Give the phone to mum's name this instant! She is my sister and I have a right to talk to her! I'm me? You just swore at a child. Y y no, you're lying! You can't be her! I know it's not! So she had a very sensitive ego and the thought of her being told off by a child just broke her. It is me. And now, don't ever call us again, you drunk degenerate. Bye. I disconnected the call and blocked her. I don't know what scene will be created once we break the locks, but my mum and dad were proud of me for what I did. The fact that I was the one who said all this broke her completely. Dad was really angry that she swore at me and said I did good by not stooping to her level. Also, I was talking in front of my mum and even though she knows I swear, she's never heard me do it and I don't want to scar her. The sound of her sweet child swearing will break her. Obviously, I don't know whatever complexities are behind who owns the house and how much each person owns, but locking the house basically claiming it's all yours, while the other family members have items that are their possessions inside the house is definitely wrong. I don't know if that would be grounds for them to lose part ownership of the house, but it wouldn't look good in a court of law, surely. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.